Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I said, let's magnify the Lord. We come to lift the name of Jesus this morning for he is worthy to be praised. It's Resurrection Sunday, and if there's any Sunday that we ought to be able to celebrate, it is this Sunday. This is the Christian's Super Bowl, and I hope you came with a Super Bowl mentality this morning that you come to lift up the Savior and exalt his name, for he's worthy to be praised. At this time, let's listen to a little bit of celebrate. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, we come to celebrate the Lord. Help me say, say, celebrate. For he is risen. For he is risen. He's risen. He is risen. And he lives. And he lives. Forevermore. Forevermore. Oh, he is risen. He's risen. He is risen. The resurrection. The resurrection, the resurrection of our Lord. Celebrate, help me say it. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. We come to lift them up. Celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. For he is risen. And he lives. Forevermore. He's risen. He is risen. He's risen. Come on and help us celebrate. I want to celebrate. Woo! The resurrection of our Lord. One more time. Celebrate. Celebrate. Oh yeah, we come to celebrate the Lord. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate. For he's risen. For he is risen. He's risen. He is risen. And he lives forevermore. Forevermore. He's risen. He is risen. He is risen. Come on and celebrate. Come on and celebrate. Woo! Come on. Come on and celebrate. Woo! The resurrection, the resurrection of our Lord. Come on and put your hands together, for he is worthy to be praised. Come on. We come to celebrate. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. And let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Ooh, uh, uh, Let's celebrate. celebrate. For he is worthy of the praise. Let's celebrate. We come to give him glory. Let's celebrate. We come to give him honor. Let's celebrate. We come to give him praise. Let's celebrate. We come to bless his name. Let's Forevermore. Forevermore. He's risen. He, he is, is risen. risen. He's risen. He is risen. Come on and celebrate. On the, celebrate. the resurrection. Woo! The resurrection, the resurrection of our Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, new life. Good morning. 
Jeremiah 31 says, at that time declares the Lord, I will be the God of the families of Israel and they will be my people. Yeah, 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 this yeah, is yeah. what the Lord says, the people who survive the sword will find favor in the wilderness. Yeah. I will come to give rest to Israel. The Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. I will build you up again, and you, Virgin Israel, will be rebuilt. Again, you will take up your timbrels and go out and dance with the joyful. Again, you will plant vineyards on the hills of Samaria, and the farmers will plant them and enjoy their fruit. There will be a day when watchmen cry out on the hills of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. John 11, 25, 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? This is the yeah, word yeah, of the yeah. Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let us go into the word of prayer. Father, we thank you on this morning. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise for we know that this is the day that the Lord has made and we rejoice and am glad in it. Lord, we come before you now just commemorating and remembering. Hallelujah. This, that this is the day, Lord God, that we that we celebrate, that we remember the resurrection of our Lord. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow because he lives all fears are gone and because I know who holds the future and we look forward to what you have for us because you came and you you died so that we may have life and have it more abundantly and for that God we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor God because you didn't have to do it but I'm glad you did and so we praise you and we worship you we honor you for all that you do for us and we ask God that you bless this service Lord God as we celebrate this time of the resurrection Sunday, Lord God. Lord, we ask that you just move by your spirit, that you would have your way, that you would bless us, Lord God, and bless us abundantly, Lord God. Minister to every heart, minister to every need in the place, God, and we will give you glory, we will give you honor, and we will give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen, hallelujah, Amen. bless the name of the Lord. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord Jesus, for he's worthy of a praise, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we just come to just let you know that he got up, amen. Hallelujah. Here we go. One, two. One, two. Here we go. Here we go. He got up. He, he got, got up. up. He got up. Death could not hold him. My Savior, he, he got, got up. up. He got up. An empty grave, an empty grave, it's there to prove, it's there to prove, my Savior, he got up, my Savior, he got up, come on, he got up, he got up, he got up, death could not hold him, death could not hold him, my Savior, he got up, he got up, he got up. yeah, he got up, he got up, death could not hold him, An empty grave, an empty grave, is there to prove. My Savior got up, my Savior he got up. One more time, he got up. He got up. He got up. Death could not hold him. My Savior he got up. 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 And death could not hold him. And there's an empty grave, an empty grave that's scared to prove. Is to prove. My Savior, he got up. My Savior, he got up. It is. Put your hands together. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Four, two, 
thrown away? Who rolled the thrown away? Who rolled the thrown away? today. I said I was going to come in here and we was going to float through service, but I'm sitting here, I'm standing here, I'm looking at folks that he got up for. What Friday night they whipped him. They crucified my Savior. But what Sunday morning, he got up. I'm, 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 I'm confused. I got a miracle over here. I got a miracle over here. I got a blessing over here, and you sitting there with your arms folded on the Super Bowl for Christians about a Savior that got up. Who rolled the thorn away? Who rolled the thorn away? All the tennis, let's hear it. He rolled the thorn away. 
rolled the stone away. He 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 rolled the stone away. Come on out, toast. But my savior is. Savior lives. I was, I was thinking, there's an old preacher, there's an old saying rather that says, the Lord ain't never put more on you than you can bear. I come with correction this morning. Yes, he will because he'll bear it for you. And I'm looking at some folk that he's been bearing some stuff for you. Your children, your husband, your wife, your uncle, your auntie, your mother, your father, somebody in your life got some stuff going on and it's starting to affect you. But I double dog dare you this morning to give it over to Jesus. For he is one who will keep you. He that keepeth Israel surely shall keep his people. I wish I had somebody that would testify that the Lord's been good. His mercy endures forever. His truth is everlasting. Hey, 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 hey. I really want to move from here, but I'm, 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 I'm just, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, when I begin to take retrospect over what he's done for me in 36 years, my soul cries out, hey, hallelujah, I should have been dead, I could be dead, but the Lord. Good morning, New Life. I'll be reading the meaning of Easter. Easter means different things to different people. For people that believe in Jesus Christ is about the love of God in Jesus. To me, this is what Easter means. E for everlasting life. God's promised this, this to everyone who has faith in Jesus Christ. People who follow the words of Jesus will get to live with him forever. A is for all who believe in the word of Jesus Christ. His lessons and messages are meant for all people living on earth. S is for sacrifice. Jesus gave up his life to pay for, his, for these sins of all people because he loved us. He gave something important so we didn't have to. 
T is for trust. If we trust in God and Jesus, we can have a happy life. Trust means being that God and Jesus will be there for us even when we can't see them. E is for eternity. God says we will have, we can live forever with him if we follow Jesus Christ. And eternity never ends, and include, including when we are alive and after we die. R is for resurrection, which means God came back from the dead to lead the people, doing the impossible thing. He showed us that he, his message and power are real. Romans 8, 11 says, if the spirit of him who rises in Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he would rise Christ Jesus from the dead, will also give life to your mortal bodies through the, his spirit who dwells in you. This is what Easter means to me. My small mind can't comprehend, my simple heart can't understand, my humble heart can't take it in, the glory of the cross. I'm grateful that, you're, that you love me still and offer that your spirit will provide what I cannot fulfill to glorify the cross. Good morning, life. Today I'll be re reading, He Has Risen. The Lord is risen, the stone has rolled away but not by human hands. The morning breaks, night shadows fill away and break our death bands. The Lord is risen and buried in his tomb, the weight of sin, he is born upon the cross for me. The fear, the glory and death haunts me no more. The Lord is risen, best proven that God is heaven. Accept the sacrifice, the work, the work is done, my sins are all forgiven. My savior paid the price. Jesus came to earth to show us how to live, how to put others first, how to love, and how to give. Then he said about his work that God sent him to do. He made us clean and new. He took our penalty upon himself. He could have saved himself by calling the angels from above, but he paid the cost for our sin. He gave it out of love. Amen. Good morning, New Life. I'm going to be reading Going to Church on Easter morning. Up with the sunrise, excitement is in the air. Easter morning is finally here. Brand new clothes and a freshly washed face. Going to church to give thanks for God's grace. Good morning, new life. Today, I will be reading through today, I will be reading. Today, I will be reading about Easter. Through faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Hebrews eleven and three. Good morning, New Life. Today I'll be reading, What is Easter? What is Easter? It's not about the eggs to hunt. It's not about a bunny. It's not about brand new clothes or candy or sweet as honey. On this day many years ago, a man named Jesus Christ, upon a cross for you and me, gladly gave his life. Not for the sin that he had done or the crimes he must repay. He did it all for you and me for our sins he died that day. That's not the end of Jesus Christ. They put him in a grave, but three days later he rose again, a sin that had finally been repaid. So this Easter, as you hunt for eggs, dressed up in brand new clothes, don't think about the Easter bunny, think about why Christ arose. My resurrected Lord, my King and my Creator, he sent down his one and only Son to save us. How blessed we are to have him. Thank you, dear Lord, for saving me through your resurrection and birth. Now I am made whole. I serve a risen Savior. He's in this world today. 
I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he is always near. He lives. My jelly beans tell a wonderful story, all for God's own glory. Red is for the blood of God's only son. Black is for the sins we've done. Yellow is for the morning so bright, the day he arose to make all things right. Green, green reminds us that he is risen. White is for the forgiveness we find in him. Purple is for Jesus' throne. Pink reminds me I am that I am never alone. A bag full of jelly beans, colorful and sweet. It's a prayer, a promise, and an Easter treat. On that first glad Easter day, when the stone was rolled away, death the enemy before vanquished was for everyone. Christ the Savior rose, give life into all who in him live. Easter egg. This Easter egg is hollow, just like they found the tomb for it is meant to represent that Christ had risen for me and for you, Matthew 28 and 6. Easter morning, bright and fair, tells me of God's love and care. Flowers that are gone from view, now waking bloom anew. Dark God's face I do not see, I will trust his care for me. God is a shield who those who take refuge in him. Robbers dirty and fine. And I'll give them a heart to know that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I'll be their God. For they shall return to me with their whole heart. Jeremiah 24 7. So shall my word be that. So shall my word be that goeth forth. Goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return into me void. void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing. With two, I sent it. Isaiah, Isaiah 50, 55 and 11. I know I'm not of age, but uh, through the faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do not appear. Hebrews 11 and 3. Every wave of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord prodded the hearts. Proverbs 21 and 2. Now it's your turn, okay? Remember, give me big boy. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Philippians 2 and 4. And that is what Easter means to us.
a special presentation for you this morning. We 
hope and pray that this presentation will bless you. I hope you stay tuned in. Give us a couple of seconds. We got to make some minor adjustments and we'll be right back with you. New Life Church presents Calvary.
Oh, come on here, people of God. Come on here, people of God. We're waiting on the rest of them to come up. Come on, all of you that speeches, speeches, come on, speeches. The children who had speeches. I, I. Y'all, come on, let's show the show these children some appreciation. They worked mighty hard. Come on, y'all, take a bow, take a bow. Amen. Amen. Y'all, these children have worked so diligently hard. Well, as we're preparing for um, to get back into the normal floor of worship, if you can, um, these kids work so hard. Uh, I require a lot out of them. I require a lot out of them. And we have not done anything less than spectacular each time. And I want to thank the parents. The youth workers. Uh, thank you, Pastor, for entrusting these kids with me. Calvary. Calvary. Well, we got one more surprise before we hear the word of God. We got one more presentation to Christ for Calvary before we hear the word of God. Um, I would like to introduce to you all my good friend, Mrs. Ariel Grayer. Put your hands together as she brings us our sermonic hymn. And the very next voice after that, you will hear will be none other than our pastor, Reverend Andrew Walker Beard II. Good morning. All right. So on this good East, I just want to say that the reason why I worship may not be the reason why you worship. My sin will never be your sin. My dirt can never be your dirt. So my alabaster box is what I'll be pouring out this morning. Amen. The room grew still as she made a way to Jesus. She stumbled through the tears that made her blind. She felt such pain. Some spoke in anger. Heard folks whisper, there's no place here for kind. Still on she came. Through the pain and flushed her face Until at last She knelt before his feet And no, she spoke no words Everything she said was heard And she poured her love for the master From the backs of the bastard and I've come to pour my praise on you like oil from Mary's alabaster box. 
Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my teeth and I try them with my hair. You weren't there. the cost of the ho-ho in my alabaster box. I can't forget the way life used to be. I was a prisoner to the sin that had me bound. And I spill my taste, poured our life without measure into a little treasure box I thought I found. Until the day when Jesus came to me and healed my soul with a wonder of Like oh, from Mary's alabaster box. Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and dry them with my. My God, it's prayer time. God, we, it's prayer time. It's also prayer time. If you have the desire to make your way this way, please make your way this way. Um, if I could, can I get Katina Herring to the front, um, Sandra Donnell, Pam Roy, um, Brother Holmes, and I, I need y'all to come up to the front with me for just a second. We're going to do something a little different today with altar prayer. If you want to individualize prayer, come see one of these people across the front. I'm going to pray communitively, and they'll pray for you individually. Amen? Amen? So it's altar prayer time. Oh, you don't know the cost of the oil. As you're making your way this way, if you need individual prayer, you can see one of the four people that's across the front. I'm going to be praying corporately, and they're going to be praying for you individually. You might have a special need. 
You may have a special desire. One of these four people, matter of fact, Brother Handy, come help me, please. You come see one of these four people across the front, five people now. If you need an individualized prayer, we're going to pray corporately, but I also want you to know that you can come up and somebody can hear your specific need, your specific care, and they will help you. They begin to pray for you. God, our Father, we come to you right now. Thanking you for this Resurrection Sunday. God, thanking you for this opportunity to be able to pray and to celebrate the King of Kings, the risen Savior, the one who took our place at Calvary. God, we thank you for the gift of being able just to worship in this house this morning. I don't know anybody's particular situation, but I pray that the person that I'm standing next to, the person that I'm sitting next to, that whatever they need, God, they realize that they can get it from you because you did more than enough when you gave your son at Calvary. God, we thank you for that because without Calvary, we wouldn't have a connection to you. Without Calvary, we wouldn't have an opportunity to experience you. Your grace and your mercy was made brighter because of your love and kindness of what you allowed Jesus to do. He did not just die, but he got up with all power in his hands. He got up with love. He got up with peace. He got up with joy. He got up with salvation. He got up with strength. He got up with might. He got up with understanding. He got up with holiness. He got up and he got up just for me. God, I thank you that you had enough love in your heart that you would even ask the question, who shall I send? And that was one you could send. One who would take my place. For every time I lied, for every time I messed up, for every time I stepped around, for every time I drunk the wrong thing, for every time I went to the wrong places, God, you had somebody who would stand in the gap just for me. And God, we say thank you. God, we come praying right now because there's some man, woman, boy, girl in this church that's wrestling with some type of situation. I don't know them individually. But I do know this, they serve a risen Savior. They serve a God that can do exceedingly and abundantly above all they can ask or think. They serve a God that has the power to resurrect their situation. They have a God that can lift up their bow down heads. They have a God that can mend their broken heart. They have a God that can fix their problems. They got a God that will lift them up from their murk and their mire. We serve a God that is able, able God. God, there's somebody in this house right now, God. They may be on the verge of, of depression. They may be on the verge of anxiety. Somebody may be getting ready to give up. Somebody may be getting ready to throw in the towel. Somebody may be getting ready to sign the divorce papers, but God, step in. Step in their situation. Step in their life, God. God, we pray now. We pray for our church. We pray for the people that are members and those who will become members. We pray for the people that are on their way here. We pray for the people that are watching us via streaming. We pray for the people who have the desire to be here but couldn't be here this morning. We pray for the folk that's in the hospital home. We pray for the people that's in the convalescent home. We pray for the doctor in the doctor's room. We pray for the lawyer that got to serve on tomorrow. We pray for the judge that got to serve next week, God. We pray right now. God, we're praying for the people of Maryland. God, that bridge was a disaster, but God, we know that you have the power to bridge them over troubled waters. God, we come praying right now for the people all around this world. Somebody's wrestling with something, God, and we know that you're getting ready to shift. You're getting ready to shift their situation. You're getting ready to straighten out their problems. You're getting ready to make their yoke light. You're getting ready to make their burdens like, oh God. We come now asking that you cover our man of God. Touch the angel of this house. That the words of his mouth and the meditation of his heart be acceptable in thy sight that he preach an uncompromising gospel. That somebody come running to this altar saying, what must I do to be saved? How do I get to know you better, Jesus? How do I get to know you at all? In Jesus' name we pray and we thank God for hearing this prayer. Amen. I've got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way. I'll keep my life clean every day. I want to go with him when he comes back. 
I've come too far and I never turn back. God is, oh yes he is, oh yes he is, he's my all hand, oh no. Stand it to your feet all over the room. And all. Hey, 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 God is. Let's receive our pastor, Pastor Andrew Walker Berry II. Oh, ho, oh, ho. Oh. Well, we greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our liberator from sin and oppression. If God has been good to you on this Resurrection Sunday, will you do me a big favor and take your left hand and your right hand, put them together. Come on, church, you can do better than that. Come on, church, you can do better than that. Come on, church, you can do better than that. Amen. Amen. How we thank and praise God. Good morning to each and every one of you. It is so good to see Lottie Dottie and everybody. Some of y'all I have not seen since last Easter, but I'm glad you're here today. To all of our visitors, God bless you. Uh, we appreciate you. How many uh, are worshiping with our parents today? You worship with your parents? You worship with your parents? Okay, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Uh, man, I look. You know, I got to, you know, I got to try to be uh, on days like this. We call these high worship days. And so I try to wear the priestly garments. But listen, looking at them babies recite them speeches. And, and watching Jesus come down the middle aisle, I don't care how cool, calm, collected, or how nice you are. When you see the children that that don't really fully understand why they dancing, I need somebody who done been to jail, who done had an addiction. But you can say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, no, I need some noise in here today. I said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, I still should be in jail. I still should be unemployed. But God, but God. Let me tell y'all something. Uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 3. While you go in there, Mark 16, uh, verse 3. Listen, I'm going to take my time and enjoy myself today. Roy James, so good to see you. Mm -hmm. I like to call him out when he's here. Mm -hmm. Love you, man. Um, but but last year, I was up here and singing. Y'all remember what had happened? And uh, uh, I passed all the way out. <laughs> and uh, uh, matter of fact, no, I can't tell you that we in church. But uh, um, um, but so this morning, I made sure. Uh, that I got on uh, 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 Under Armour and that I am a uh, cool, calm, and collected. He got the fans going. So we don't want no trouble at the river. Amen. So Mark 16, verse 3. If you got it, say, I got it. If you don't have it, say, help me, Lord. Mark 16 and 3. And they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone? 
from the door of the sepulcher. Who shall roll away the stone? I want to talk on this Resurrection Sunday, 2024, Mission Impossible. You may claim your seats. Mission Impossible. The word Easter, my brothers and sisters, in occurs in the Bible only one time. As a matter of fact, it is because of a mistranslation or a transfer of words. In Acts chapter 12, verse 4, the word Easter in our King James Version of the Bible means Passover. Easter is used by the Christian religion to celebrate the resurrection of our founder, Jesus Christ. It is a practice, my brothers and sisters, borrowed from heathen religions who use this season to celebrate the goddess of spring. There are religions among us today who do not celebrate this as a religious holiday. In fact, they believe and teach the celebration of Easter is a sin because it's not in the Bible. And also because it was initiated by heathens as it relates to our interpretation. I mean, let's be honest. Doesn't it always seem that things that God wants us to regard as sacred and holy, the devil always seems to take a spin on it? I mean, think about it. Where Christmas is the time where we celebrate the advent of our Messiah, who was born of a virgin in a barn on the backside of Bethlehem, We'd much rather talk about Frosty, Rudolph, Santa Claus, and even the little drummer boy. <laughs> rather than even today. And I ain't shading you. You look good in your Easter clothes. Some of y'all just pulled the tag off of it this morning. But the truth of the matter is, if what you're wearing is like me, because I wore black, but if you are like me and you didn't get anything new, you understand that just because you don't have on pastels today, that ain't why you came to new life this morning. <laughs> just, 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 just because you are a Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter attendee, uh, that, that ain't why you came. You didn't come because the season is about the Easter brunch that you will enjoy after service or the Easter dinner or the Easter egg hunt or a bunny rabbit. No, this season is about the fact that what distinguishes our faith among the rest of the world's religions is that our founder not only died, but we believe that he's the only one that still lives. Do I have anybody in here that can testify Confucius died and he's still dead? Buddha died and he's still dead. Muhammad died and he's still dead. Oh, but Jesus died on Friday. I thought I came to preach to some live ones this morning. I said one Friday he died, but early Sunday morning he got up. That's why he you get up because he got up. Do I have a witness out there? This Sunday, my brothers and sisters, if you don't have any reason in your shouter to shout on, it ought to be the fact that God has a one-size-fits-all 
kind of love. It don't matter what side of the tracks you were born on. Doesn't matter if you're black, if you're white. Doesn't matter if you're ignorant or educated. Doesn't matter if you've been to jail. Doesn't matter if you got a degree or a diploma. Don't matter if you're shacking. Don't matter if you're a drunkard. Doesn't matter if you're a weed head. There is nothing that you can do that will separate you from God's love. That's what the cross is. The cross is the revelation to show you how far God's love will go to show you how much you mean to him. See, here's my problem. I got a lot of people that say they love me but don't do nothing for me. Do I have anybody in here that say, if you love me, show me what you're working with. Is there anybody in here that knows that if I don't have faith in the fact that God loves me, when I look at the cross, it is the symbol and the sign of his love for us. The resurrection of Jesus Christ don't get it twisted, is the most important fact of history. His resurrection is different from any other. His resurrection is not general, it is specific. Yeah, it, 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 is, it is not first, but it is foremost. It is not human, but it is divine. His resurrection is the main fact of Christianity. Adam represents the first resurrection. Hear me out. I came to work today. Because God caused a deep sleep to fall on him and perform the first successful operation and raise Eve from the rib of Adam and then brought Adam back to life. Bing! Resurrection. But the Christian religion has been forever unmoved by this mighty act of God. Isaac represents resurrection as Sarah, his mother, had changed, had changed lives. Her womb was dead, but from the dead womb of Sarah, God raised Isaac, ding, resurrection. But here's what interests me. When we look at our text today, I hope you didn't close your Bibles. Thank you, Lena. Notice, my brothers and sisters, and I'm going to make some of you mad today. <laughs> Something else almost came out. Here's what I love. Hmm. Notice in verse 3, who are the ones that go to see the tomb? You, you would think that Jesus would having 12 masculine disciples, oh wait, he lost one, uh, because sometimes you need to learn that everybody that walked with you ain't walking for you. I, I just had to tell somebody that they may be smiling in your face, but guess what? They are on the low dragging you. Uh, hey, do I have anybody in here? That, that got some folk in your life that you know smile in your face, but we'll talk about you and then act like y'all BFF shy, please. Uh, look, look, it's in there. It's three women. Hold up. Hold up. It's a man's world. But it would be nothing without a woman or a girl. I'll put it to you like this, my beautiful sisters, and y'all look good today. You look as good as a bacon and egg sandwich. But let me tell you something. If God made something better than a woman, he kept it for himself. Do I have a brother out there that will praise God for the sisters? Here's what I like. Notice, though, 
the sisters had enough courage, watch this, to get up early. They, they said, they, they, they had, have you ever had somebody in your family die? Isn't the hardest thing to do is sleep? You, you, you can't sleep because your heart is grieving and even when you sleep, you have memories of your lost one. And so they couldn't sleep. They got up. And Tina, they got up early to see Jesus. Because if I want to see him, I got to get up early. The problem with some of y'all is you are hitting the snooze button when God says, if you seek me early, you're going to find what you didn't expect to find. That, that ain't the point I'm trying to make here. I got to go. But, but check this out. Here's what shouts me. They go to the tomb, the sisters. When they get there, they're going there because it was Jewish tradition that when you die, you are immediately buried because they did not believe in embalming. So to overcome the stench of a rotting corpse, they would anoint the body. That's why when that sister started singing about the alabaster box, y'all were looking, but I was shouting. Because watch this, they took Jesus off the cross, put him in the tomb, rolled a 2,000 pound stone in front of it. So these sisters, watch this, were coming to see a dead man. But what they missed was, was Jesus had already been anointed before he even got to the cross. See, a problem, are you missing this? The problem is their level of expectation, although it was high, it was still misguided. Who am I talking to today that has faith in God, but you need a little bit more faith because what you see is not always what you get. So sometimes you got to say, Lord, just blow my mind by any means necessary. I'm just going to seek you and hope I can find you. But here's the problem. They get their church. And the stone is rolled away. Okay. Now, you know, folk, I've learned this. I'm, I'm a year older than I was last year. So that made me 30, none your business. And uh, none your business. Uh -huh. and, uh, and so I, I've learned this about people. I love people, but this is what I've learned about people. People, Ron, will lie to you. They will lie for you. They will lie with you. And then they will lie on you. Now, here's, here's where the conspiracy theory begins. Because the basis of preaching in the original church circulated around the resurrection, okay? I was listening to a, a video on TikTok the other day, and it was a group of young, young brothers, and as they were sitting there, they were discussing why millennials don't go to church. And I'm glad y'all here today. If I don't see you now more time this year, you can say, when I sent you, I said what I said, and I meant what I said. They said because the church and the preacher have gone from a transformative experience and the gospel of Jesus Christ being preached 
to an entertainment show with motivational speakers. So instead of the pastor teaching me how to live holy in order to get to heaven, he's giving me tips on how to make him rich and me happy. <laughs> because you can't preach the gospel without taking an evaluation of your own sin because the cross shows us that sin is dirty. All right, this is where I get ignorant. Because I can't stand you Negroes with amnesia. Where you got the unmitigated gall to call me and tell me what you heard somebody said that you didn't see or hear for yourself spreading some bad news, dragging somebody else and stuff. Baby, you ought to thank God that your mess ain't all in the streets. The church is not a place for people who come here whole. This is the place with your messed up self. This is where you come. Let me tell you the kind of church I pastor. I pastor the kind of church where the members that the Lord has entrusted into my care share with me things that sometimes they don't even share with members of their family. I got members that would tell me, Pastor, I just got a new job. Pastor, I just bought a new house. Pastor, this, that, and the other. And, but the ones that shout me are the ones that praise God when God has gotten them out of trouble. I, I mean, this is a real one. I got a text message the other day, and I almost shouted out of my shoes in the grocery store. The text message just simply said, Pastor, I'm off of probation. Mm. I don't see how you can sit there like that. Because maybe you ain't never been in trouble. But I need somebody who done messed up and it wasn't nobody else. You did it to yourself. You had to serve your time. And you can say the charges have been dropped. I have been forgiven. So let me tell you, I got three things. We out of here. You ready for... Point number one, when the mission is impossible, carry on. Carry on. The angel appears to the sisters. And I like this. Um, they said, wait, wait. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? You clearly was not listening to him because he said, destroy this temple and in three days, I wish I had a Bible reading here, I, I'll raise it up. And, 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 and so they said, look, come see where he lay. Now, the question is, what was the angel trying to show them? Because when they looked in there, guess what they saw? Nothing. Okay, you missing it. You missing this. They came to see a body. But the angel says, come see where he used to lay. There are people in here today that have had your backs up against the wall. And people came to see a body. But now they see that where you used to lay, now you have been resurrected from your bad decisions, resurrected from depression, resurrected into new life. Do I have anybody in here that's been resurrected? Y'all learn to carry on. Carry on. In the midst of difficulties. Isn't it amazing how possible everything seems when things are going right? 
But somebody in here, you can testify, Rev, it's just March. And I'm tired of 24. Somebody told me today the 31st. I said, Lord, tomorrow is the first. I got to pay rent again. Make you want to holler and throw up both your hands. But carry on. Because, help me, Holy Ghost, you don't discover who God is in the sunshine. Remember, Jesus foretold Peter of his death, and Peter said, don't worry, because before you go, I go. And Jesus said, no, you're going to leave me, but this is what I love is the fact that the disciples are sitting up in a room scared, and the word gets to them, go get my disciples and Peter. Uh, Peter, you in here today. Peter, you got your Easter clothes on, but you in here. Because, Peter, you said, I'm going to go, look, look you, you, do, you know how we do? Lord, if you get me out of this, <laughs> man, I promise I ain't never, I, I ain't never drinking Hennessy again, Lord, I promise. Lord, I promise I ain't going to that club no more, Lord, I promise I ain't going back to that house, Lord, I promise. On God, I promise, Lord. And as soon as you get out of it, you right back. <laughs> if you can't say amen, say ouch. talking to you, Peter. Peter said, Lord, I got your back. And as soon as Jesus is arrested, the same Peter that was rowdy, rowdy, bowdy, bowdy turned coat. Here's what I love. Jesus says, Get my disciples and Peter. I love the fact that we serve a God that specializes in recycling trash. I, I, need, some, I need some gutter folk in here. I need some folk that's got some trash in your life that you don't want people to know about your past. But you can say the same Jesus that used Peter is using me right now. Can I preach it how I feel it? Y'all ain't got to defend me in these streets. Y'all ain't got to worry about what they saying about me. Because I never told you I was perfect. I never told you I was sinless. And I am an example that if you give your life to Christ, God can use anybody. I don't know about you, but I don't need nobody preaching to me they ain't never been in no trouble. I don't need nobody telling me how they can get out of stuff. You ain't never had no pain. I need somebody that's been to hell and back that can testify if it had not been. All right, I'm almost done. Carry on. When it seems impossible. Think about this. These sisters believe that all things were possible when you believe. Some of y'all got more faith in them old benches you sitting on right now than you do in the God that woke you up this morning. Y'all said that we got to fix and move a bench every week. I'm tired of it. But some of y'all just plop your behinds down on the pew. Just bump. And you got faith that that old pew that we didn't buy gonna keep your happy hips on level ground. Come on now. We fall down, but we'll, you'll, you'll eventually get up. You think about it. You came in here today. And you sat down on that pew and you had the faith 
that that pew could hold you up. Watch this. And not just you. But the other folk on the pew with you. And everybody in here, some of y'all in here, uh, you know, a, a burger short or need to go to Weight Watchers. I'm just saying. And yet, God says, trust me with your resources. Trust me with your soul. Trust me with your family. Trust me with your faith. And you got more faith in an old pew than you do in a great God. Clark sisters, put it like this. I'm looking for a miracle. I love turning that corner as I come to church. And I said, Lord, fill this house. I don't know what you all have been through over the last six days of the last time I saw you. Some of you smiling right now through your pain. Some of you right now, where everybody else is enjoying Easter dinner, you going home to eat a sandwich and some chips. Let me say this, ain't nothing wrong with that. A good turkey sandwich and some hot fries will take you mighty long way. I can't get no help in here anyway. Some of you in here are physically ill. But can I tell you what the rest message of the resurrection is? Is when the mission is impossible, remember God is always able. Somebody in here needs to be reminded of that. Somebody in here needs to be reminded that be not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care of you. I end with this. I hope I help somebody today. Be reminded of this. You have to go through this life with a little bit of courage. I'm running for commissioner at large. No political experience. Neither did Donald Trump. Okay, you get that on the way home. Shots fired. Okay, uh, anyway. It's easy for me to criticize when I, to criticize, watch this, what I'm not willing to do or that I'm able to do. It's easy for me to say, oh, that professional basketball team is sorry when I couldn't even make the freshman team. It takes courage to say, Lord, I know I've never been here before. I know I don't have the experience, but I've got courage to carry on. Let me tell you why. Give me, give me three minutes, I'm out, okay? Will y'all do that for me? Please. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I love y'all so much. I want to challenge you in the area of your faith for someone whose dreams have been deferred. Your faith is shaken. Your hopes are gone. Remember this. God does some of his best work in the cemetery. Come here. Mary Martha to the witness stand. What do you have to say? Our brother died. And Jesus showed up four days late. And he said, roll the stone away. 
And all we know, we can't explain it, but all we know is he said, Lazarus, come forth. And at that moment, an old black preacher stood up and said, well, I hate to interrupt their testimony, but I'm glad he said, Lazarus, get up. Because if he had just said, get up, <laughs> Abraham would have started walking and Moses would have started walking because when Jesus speak, dead stuff got to move. <laughs> okay, you still sitting there? Uh, come here, the widow of name. The word says this widow <laughs> was on her way to the cemetery to bury her child. And the Bible says that Jesus seeing this dead funeral procession touches the casket and the little boy that was dead y'all ain't saying nothing to me today got up and the word said the little boy not only got up but Ron he started talking now I don't know about you but I'm about to shut it down here so if you ain't shouting uh, that's on you but 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 I know that he specializes in dead things because the Bible says that when this young boy was resurrected, the word says uh, that he started talking. And the Bible does not fully describe what exactly he was saying. Uh, but I don't know, but if I was dead and I was brought back to life, if I was dead and I woke up in my own casket, if I woke up and I was on the way to the cemetery and I realized that the Lord gave me another chance, I'd simply fix my mouth and lift up my hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Have I got a witness that can say, thank you, Jesus for waking me up early this morning because God sent his son they called him Jesus he came he came to love heal and forgive he lived and he died to buy my pardon an empty grave is there to prove that my Savior, my Savior lives. Stand to your feet and say, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Say yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's all right. No, he's all right. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Give him glory. Give him praise. praise his name the mission that was impossible has been made possible and that's why you're here today yes he did he got up oh with all power in his hands 
And for that, we have a reason to celebrate him in this house, to worship him and to lift up his name. That may be someone in this room this morning. You realize that you've been through so many impossibilities in your life, but because of God, giving his only begotten son, you are here today. You're here in this house, and I don't know what your personal situation is, but I do know this. God can do what no other power can do. I'm saying to you, my brother, my sister, I understand that this road gets tough sometimes. The burdens of life may weigh, may weigh you down, but there's a God who can heal you. If he resurrected Jesus... He can resurrect you, whether it's your finances, whether it's your situation, whether it's your mind, whether it's your heart, whether you sitting on the edge of your seat saying, Reverend, I really want to just give up right now. I tell you right now, today, just come. Oh, that's nothing better. There's nothing better. No, in Jesus. one coming to the body of Christ. Put your hands together. We ought to celebrate. You ought to know him. Come on and get to know him. Get to know him. Oh, right now. Right now. Today. today just come. There's nothing better. place where I'm going to church and I'm growing in that church. So we invite you, if that's you, my brother, my sister, little man, little woman, I, we invite you to come on this way. And if you can't walk on your own, I'll come get you personally. Somebody around you will walk you up this way. I know you need God because I see you in the building this morning. So if that's you, you might be saved, but you need a church home. Come on this way. Wait a minute. The preacher said that if you could just believe that God is doing something in your life, if you could just take a few seconds to realize that God has straightened some stuff out, oh, I wouldn't sit there. I wouldn't leave this building not knowing who he is. You got here today on faith. You got here today on grace. But you might not get to see later on or tomorrow. You could walk out of here and be in a bad, bad situation. You could get in your car and have a bad, bad accident. But I tell you, if you give your life to Jesus, he'll give you strength to endure all situations. So maybe you got a church home. Maybe you, you are a Christian. Maybe you just need prayer. We invite you to come this way. Oh, oh. one that has come and we praise God for this one. Will you stand up for me please sir? You 
You mighty sharp today. You mighty sharp. What is your name? Aiden. 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 What's your last name, Aiden? Williams. Aiden Williams. Aiden, how old are you? Nine. Nine years old. Can y'all believe that I was his age when I started preaching? Oh, my goodness. And I didn't grow very much since, uh, <laughs> since then. But Aiden, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, okay? Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died for you? Yes. Will you be baptized and live for Jesus Christ the rest of your life? Yes. Guess what, Aiden? You, my brother, today on this Easter Sunday, you are saved. Come on, church, let's give God praise. Come on, heaven rejoices when one soul comes and remember the Creator in the days of your youth. God bless you. Amen. If you will go with Miss Ashley and Miss Logan, I believe they'll get some information from you about the process. Wow. See, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Amen. All right. Amen. Again, ours to extend, yours to accept and or reject. Uh, God will not lay it to our charge. Guess what? It's an exciting time of worship. I love it on Sundays like this because it's, a, it's, it's somebody sitting on every pew. And I'm excited because it's offering time. God loves a. Amen. We give. The word says give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over in church. Uh, we know that the Lord has charged us to take care of uh, the work of ministry. And I'm so grateful that for five years we have been able to operate in ministry. And that is not just because of the faith that we have in God, but the finances that God has given to you, you sacrificially and cheerfully give back to him. Remember, tomorrow's the first. We got to pay the bills. We got to take care of that. But I just wish somebody in here had enough faith to say i'm gonna give i'm gonna have the courage to give and i'm gonna watch how god blows my mind by what i give how many of us can testify you can't beat god's giving no matter how you try come on i need somebody that's a tither that can say he will enlarge your territory if you give to him so thank you to all of you uh, who have been giving. I'm praying for those of you who are giving the best that you can. Don't disqualify yourself because of the amount of what you're able to give. But if you give with the right intentions, God will bless not only the church, but God will bless you. If you want to be a blessing to y'all's little pastor, as y'all refer to me as, uh, if you want to be a blessing to your shepherd, your leader, uh, you can do so by putting that in the love offering on your envelope or the cash app, dollar sign, AW2. Remember, you give Tithely, uh, uh, excuse me, the uh, Tithely app as well as the cash app. All right, you ready to give on this Resurrection Sunday? All right, all right. Let's stand all together, standing all together. Lift your gifts in the air. Please do not leave without getting a benediction. Please don't leave without getting a benediction. But lift your gifts in the air and wave them like you just don't care. Okay, y'all so hood. Lord, we say thank you for gift and giver for seed and soil. Bless them as they give to the work of ministry. You have supplied all of new life's need, and we ask that you continue to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think in the area of finance in this church. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's follow the ushers from the rear. Return to your seats. We'll hear the announcements and the benediction. Let's give, church.
Has everyone been given a chance to give? All right, let's bless these gifts. Lord, we say thank you for gift and giving for seed and soil. Bless them both. Let no one go lacking as a consequence of what they give. Strengthen us in the area of faith and in finance here at New Life Church. And we'll give you the name, the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, moving forward, we'll hear the announcements and other things, and then we'll be on our way to brunch. Amen. Amen. Let's give Miss Tina a hand. She got a new hairstyle. Good morning. Today is Sunday, March 31st, and these are our announcements. Evangelism Day is every first Saturday of the month. Please meet at the church at 10 a.m. If you have any questions, please see Pastor Barry. Sunday school is every second and fourth Sunday at 9.15 a.m. Children's Church is every second and third Sunday. Bible study is every Wednesday at 7 p.m. All ministry meetings are the third Wednesday of the month from 6 p.m. to 6.30, except for the women and the men. The women and the men's ministry meet at 6.30 to 6.55. Any questions, please see Reverend Finley. Virtual prayers every Thursday at 7 p.m. Please submit your prayer requests by Wednesday at noon to New Life Church of TX at gmail.com. Victoria's Disciples class is every third Saturday of the month at 10 o'clock. Any questions, please see Tina Heron. Mount Paran Baptist Church will be celebrating their 63rd church anniversary the second Sunday in April at 11 a.m. Pastor Barry will be the guest speaker. Please come out and support him immediately after service. Please continue to pray for those on the prayer list. Audrey Jones, Anthony Britton, Denise James, Melanie Anderson, Lena Cunningham, Helen Morris, Daphne Kenton, Daphne Kennedy, excuse me, Sonia Tucker, Maggie Elric and family, Sarah Renard, Damon Horn and parents, Nathaniel and Betty Loftus. Please continue to bring your loose change to help support the building fund. Containers are in the front of entrance of the church. Please submit all announcements to New Life Church of TX at gmail.com by Saturday at 9 at noon in order to be read on Sunday. This concludes the announcements for today. Thank you. So I got Miss. English up here with England, I'm sorry, with me. Um, we're going to be doing the raffle for the 50-50 raffle. So let me tell you why I selected her. Can't nobody say she cheated. She don't know none of us enough to say she cheated for us, okay? So she, I'm gonna shake it and she's gonna, she waving y'all, y'all wave back. Don't she look cute? Got her all white on. She always be fly every Sunday. All right, can we get a drum roll? All right, the last four numbers of this ticket is going to be 2026, 2026. Oh, wow. He go, no, he go. You can have this one. Oh, never mind. Thank you so much, England. The winner, I'm going to call this number again, 2026. The name is Miss Pat Britton. Miss Pat Britton is the winner. Come on up here, Miss Pat. I am so glad that I picked that ticket myself. That's why I didn't pick the ticket myself. See, she sold the tickets. And let me tell y'all something. Everybody ticket is in here because Reverend Finley had to count this to make sure that the money match what I'm getting ready to give. I ain't gonna tell nobody how much money you got. Here you go. Y'all come on, let's celebrate Miss Britton. Amen. One last thing and I'm out the way back to our pastor. Uh, thank you all so much for your participation on yesterday. We had a marvelous time with fun on the lawn. And I look forward to doing it again next year, amen. All right, 
Now I'm trying to figure this out because they done put this poor baby in this mess uh, that they done created. How Miss Pat was the one selling the tickets and won, okay. If it wasn't Miss Pat that won, I would have really been like, okay, you got something else you need to say? Come on now, we hungry, doc. Man, if you don't hurry up and run, give me, I'm ready to go, come on, man. These people. What's the last, how many? 2051. Now this is really cheating. Deborah Norris, that is cheating, that is cheating. That is cheating. Cheating. All this going on in the body of Christ, all of this. But again, uh, on a serious note, uh, thank you uh, to everyone who made Good Friday such a wonderful celebration. A lot of y'all stayed at home, uh, but uh, if, you, if you missed it, you missed the treat. Both preachers did an excellent job. And then yesterday, uh, the fun on the lawn, it was awesome to see all of the things that took place, uh, crawfish as well as the fried fish. I uh, don't want to start calling names because I might forget, but you know who you are, and thank you for making uh, this entire experience, this entire weekend great. Come on, come on. If you love your church and what's going on in your church, praise God, okay? Uh, on your way out, the ushers and other folks should be passing some items to you uh, just to let you know this Friday. Let the church say Friday. This Friday at the Pallet Bar right on 6th Street from 7 to 9, I'll be doing another campaign meet and greet and fundraiser. And so if you want to contribute to the Andrew Walker Bear II Commissioner at Large campaign, I want to invite you to come on out. Please, if you have not, go to the website, www.barry, the number four, commissioner.com. Again, Barry, the number four, commissioner.com and you can subscribe you can also donate let the church say donate hallelujah let the church say donate again all right y'all go help the pastor get this thing y'all go help me you're gonna support me praise god for all three of you that's gonna vote for me i said y'all gonna help me you're gonna push me we're gonna get this done come on let's make some noise all right let's stand let's stand let's stand let's stand did you have a great time in church? All righty. Well, listen, I want you to have a great week. Bible study, uh, Wednesday, 7 p.m. So we look forward to seeing you in Bible study. Until the next time I see you, now unto him who is able to keep each and every one of us from falling. He's able to present us faultless with the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God that that God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Say it for me on this Resurrection Sunday. We are new life church.